Hello everybody, welcome back to the 747200 project. Um, just a little update video for you today. As I promised, I would bring one out by the end of the week. This one's going to be a little bit... Uh, it's not going to be as long as the other one. Um, and I'm not actually in the cockpit, I'm at home. Um, so I have three main things to talk about uh, quickly in this um, video. First of all, this is, as you can see, this is a what we call uh, the inertial navigation system. This was remo removed from the pedestal of um, the MK747-200 that uh, I own, that I'm painstakingly restoring. Um, as you can see, uh, it is a very, very old, uh, very, very old piece of kit. And in modern airliners, as many will know, we don't have these anymore. We haven't had these since the 80s. Um, I could be wrong in saying that, but this is a very, very old system. Um, and this is basically the forerunner to the flight management computer, which is what uh, everybody says looks like a big calculator. Now, um, I'm not sure if you remember, if you look at my previous video, you'll see in the cockpit that um, in the pedestal I have put a, sorry about that interruption, um, in the pedestal I have put a, um, I don't know whether I spoke about it in the last update, but I've put a uh, flight management computer in place, um, mainly to see if it fits, it's from a 747-400, it's not a real, it's not an OEM part, it's uh, a replica uh, reproduced by a major uh, flight simulator manufacturing company, which I'll talk about in a moment. But, but basically the main question I have to ask is to my followers, and I don't have many, uh, I think I have 90 followers at the moment, but the main question I have to ask is, would people prefer to keep the original INS systems, so to keep these in the cockpit, or to have the updated um, flight management computers. Now I am leaning more towards um, the flight management computers because they're easier to use, they're much more practical um, and uh, I don't think I've spoken about it yet but the simulator will not be a private simulator, it will be opened up to the public when it's finished and run as an experience and I think that for that reason um, for doing multiple approaches uh, on runways and smaller short flight plans, I think that the flight management computer will be a much better, um, much better option. Uh, so that's what I'm leaning towards, but I'll, I'll be interested to see what uh, people think. Just quickly, um, I have a panel diagram sheet from British Airways. This is a r original panel diagram sheet it's got all of the panels circuit breakers everything from the 747-200 and i'm f only filming this because of a film on top you can see my shadow and it's annoying um, so excuse me about the squeaky chair so if we look at the section where the ins would be which i've marked with a pen yeah we can see here that in the british airways 747s they replaced the original INS with flight management computers. And the 747s that they had wouldn't have been built with flight management computers, they were replacements. Um, as I will quickly show you on my computer screen, if you can see, I have here a quick video from, the, uh, from 1990. You can see that that is a 747 um, flight management computer inside the 747-200 so they replaced these with the 747-400 version um, which is what I am thinking that I'm going to do but just to show that this this did actually happen um, it's not just me trying to modernize my cockpit for the sake of it um, it's just about practicality and just to show that this was a genuine uh, something that was genuinely done um, but it must be said that on the pedestal 
I quickly show you. They kept the INS system. So this here, they kept in the pedestal. So I might put this one back and then um, use my uh, flight management computer that's in the pedestal currently uh, in the pilot side and get a spare one uh, or a second one for the first officer side or the captain's side, whichever, whichever side, it doesn't really matter. Um, just to quickly show what, excuse me, what we have available. This is open cockpits. Um, this is a plug and play device. Um, as you can see, looks all right, doesn't look too bad. Um, and I'm liking the price, 536 euros. Which is pretty good. Um, and for two of those, what will that be? Something. Trying to do my maths here. Oh, I don't know. Just over a thousand pounds, which isn't too bad at all. Um, and I've read reviews about this. It's apparently a very good product. Um, so yeah. On the other. So this is what I'm, I'm drawn towards, this um, open cockpits. I'll buy two of these and sell my Flight Deck Solutions um, flight management computer, which is in the cockpit currently. If we go to Flight Deck Solutions, this is what they have. Flight Deck Solutions 747 Pro MX CDUE. Um, but these are massively expensive. Um, at the time when I bought mine, it was £700, I think. I think these are now over £1,000 each, and this particular one is for a 747-8. So I'm not even sure if they still do. Let me have a look. The 747-400 doesn't look like it. Um, but I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, I'm probably, if I do decide to go for the flight management computer, go for two of these here. Um, so the second um, point that I'm going to come across is, let me just look at my notes, um, donations. Um, it's only a quick one. Um, I am in my early 20s, I'm a student and funding this project is very, very difficult. Um, you could argue that yes, uh, I knew what I was getting into when I decided to go for this project, uh, and yes, that is true, but um, I want to get it done as quickly as possible, and donations would be much appreciated. Just by a show of hands in the comments, if anyone is interested in sending donations, let me know, and then in one of the future update videos, I will talk about, um, I will create a donations page. If no one's interested in sending donations, that's fine, you don't have to. But um, those who do send donations will be um, rewarded, um, especially considering the simulator will be open to the public. Um, I'm not sure how those who donate will be rewarded yet, but all of the people who make donations will be listed down and uh, you will get certain perks um, eventually when the simulator is up and running. Um, so I'm not sure what that would mean. Again, I need to have a look whether it would mean free flight experiences, I don't know. Um, but I would need to speak to my the few other people that I'm working on this business with. Um, but yeah, just let me know if anyone's interested in sending donations. Let me know in the comment section. If not, and please, you don't have to send donations. I'm not begging or asking for money. I'm just saying if anybody is interested, let me know. Uh, and uh, we'll sort out a donations page. Anyway, um, on to the last quick... Um, update it's parts like these here this is a spare this is from a japanese airline 747 100 um it's a pressurization panel uh so um but let me check my notes yeah missing parts so i, I touched upon this in the last video very very briefly um 
if I just show you, um, there are several 747. So the place where I bought all of the spare parts for my 747 um, was in Michigan. It was a Kalita Airlines hub. Unfortunately, they've scrapped all of the 747-200s, so I can't ask them um, for any more parts. Um, but we do have, um, I don't know how you pronounce this, whether it's Pine or, or Pinal um, Air Park, which is located, where is it? In the United States, Arizona. And it is, to my knowledge, the has the biggest collection of 747 classics. Um, if we just zoom in here, you can see, look, they even still have Tri-Stars. Um, what's that, that's a, but look, we have 747 Classic. That's a 400 by the looks of it. That's a 400. This is why I massively embarrass myself by saying they have loads of classics and they don't, yeah. Um, another classic there, so 300 by the looks of it. Another classic, it's 400 there. But you can just see, um, they have tons of 747 classics. Northwest classic, look at how many there are here alone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six seven four seven classics just parked there. Um, I believe they've got a handful of others. Uh, anyway, it's not important, but you can see my point. They have got very very many seven four seven classics. I've emailed them countless times, and they're not interested in selling any parts, which is very disappointing. I can't understand why, I guess my only guess would be that these planes are still owned by the airlines that operated them and they're in storage and nobody is interested in getting rid of them. Um, that was a dream lifter there. But uh, yeah, but they still have 747 100s, the 200s. They did have 747 SPs, but I can't seem to spot them in this. Um, ah, here we go, yeah. 2747 SPs, so you can see what I mean, but uh, they're not interested, but I will try again um, and see if I can get a few parts. It's just for the Flight Engineers panel. I am getting them reproduced, the missing panels for the Flight Engineers panel, but eventually I want the real deal. Uh, I want as little um, reproduced parts in the cockpit as possible. So I've been looking, but um, we also have a place in France. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the name. Okay. They have three 747 classics, two 747 200s. You can see that's in terrible condition. One there. Uh, one here. Interesting fact about this one. This one, uh, I think a bomb went off on this one and uh, the plane nearly crashed and unfortunately killed a passenger, which is very sad. I can't remember the airline. And they've got an SP over there. Um, so I will contact these folks here to see if they're interested in selling me just a few parts. But again, I'm, I very much doubt that they will because these two here are being used as training aircraft something the only one there is the 747 sp which i think is just in storage but uh i think everything's been gutted but i could be wrong but yeah that's all i uh am mentioning today um so yeah if anybody knows of any places where i could get my hands on just a few parts let me know because I've checked everywhere. I can't for the life of me find anywhere where I can. I'm, I'm missing two bus tie panels, a hydraulic uh, system three panel and a brake temperature panel. That's it. That's all I need um, Four panels. And I can't find them anywhere. Um, but yeah, so um, thank you very much for watching. This has actually turned out to be a longer video than the last one. I know it's a bit boring because I'm not uh, actually in the cockpit, but uh, it's important things that I needed to establish and find out uh, and, and let you know but um, 
yeah so thank you very much for watching and uh, i will see you in the next one uh next week thanks